So this is this is where I love getting into it, Chris, because like you and I, I mean, you're probably a little bit ahead of me. You know, you got a few more years on me in terms of market, but this is the shit that people need to think about. People are looking for these goddamn home runs to an extent, and they're risking everything. What I did with Google and what I did with Amazon and what I did with Palantir and a few of these other ones, I, you know, granted, I'm more convict, I have more conviction in Palantir and, and Rocket Lab than most, and that's um, anyway, that's that's my problem, not theirs. I started with the end in mind. And what I mean by that was, is I said, I want to look for companies, you know, at this point, you know, a couple of years ago, I was getting close to the seven figure mark. And I was like, what do I want companies to be in terms of six figure positions in the portfolio? I was like, I know the S&P 500 will be, and it's already a six figure position in the portfolio, but I'm like, what other companies do I need? And what sort of growth in the stock price do I need them to be in order to get to that point? And so I was sitting there, I was just like, I want, um, I was like, I want Palantir to be at least a six figure position. I want Rocket Lab to be a six figure position. I want Amazon, Google, Shell, and a few of these other companies. It's like, well, how many shares do I need to own today? And where do I think they will go in order to get me to those six figure positions? And I wasn't just sitting you know, on Google, you know, six figure, that's anywhere between 100,000, 999,000, right? So Mm-hmm. I was sitting there realistically being like, I think Google from where we are today, this is a year ago, is probably going to be three or four X where we are. One, you're going to have inflation, right? So you have to incorporate mm-hmm. that, you know, so you're going to get a 33% uplift on any earnings associated with that. Then you get to multiply that by a good amount too, in terms of just multiple and stuff. But then also just the growth of how great these companies are are growing. Mm -hmm. And so I was sitting there being like, okay, I want Palantir to be at least a $200,000 position. I want Google to be at least a $200,000 position. I want Amazon. And so I was like, I need to have this many shares to be in spitting distance of that. Because to me, it's like, if it's not going to be that large of a position, in terms of where my net worth is, I might as well just invest in the S&P 500. Mm-hmm. And so I was just like, that's that's how I've started to get to my position sizing is I want, if I hold it in the portfolio, it's going to be a long-term hold. I want it to be a several hundred thousand dollar position in the coming, mm-hmm. you know, not tomorrow, right? But in the coming five to 10 years. And yeah. it that has evolutionized itself. And I want people to listen because... I 10 years ago, I was literally sitting there with zero dollars in my pocket, and now I am where I am today. It, and so, five hundred dollars used to be a lot. I remember I had like 300 shares or 100 shares of Sirius XM. I talk about this all the time, and I was freaking out every time it went up five bucks and down five dollars. And I talk about it at lunch. The sandwich I was eating at lunch was more expensive than the loss I had on paper that day, and I was spending the entire time talking about it. That's how much like mm-hmm. position sizing at that point. Then it went to $500 positions was a big deal. Then $1,000 was a big deal. Then $5,000. Then $10,000. And now it's getting to the point where it's like, I you know, will move $30,000, $40,000 in a day, and it's not that big of a deal because mm-hmm. at the end of the day, it's just numbers on the screen, and I've gotten used to it, and you know that, that emotion has kind of been removed from it to an extent. And so I'm kind of curious, mm-hmm. throwing it back to you, is that – similar to what you do in terms of position sizing, or is it not as complex for you? You just kind of say, I like this, I have money, I'm going to invest right now into this sort of position. Um, You know, it, it kind of depends on the the case underlying the, the stock, right? So if the valuation is so attractive and the story behind the numbers makes sense, then yeah, I don't mind going heavier than than what I'm normally allocating. Like my my position, my portfolio position right now in Google is about 10%, right? I try not to go beyond the 10% mark. I try to limit myself. But if the stock gets over, like goes really high in terms of valuation, it can definitely make a bigger portion of my portfolio. You know, I I can't deny that. Like Google, like at one point, um, Meta was about 10% of my portfolio. It ended up being 25% of my portfolio because I just had so much damn gains on the thing, which is a good problem to have, you know, but there, there has to be points where you also like, okay, what's the next thing that, um, what's the next story that people are not recognizing, right? Where's the value actually going to be? And I think that's where I differ from a lot of, um, a lot of investors where I know that there are 
there are times where I need to trim out of a position and find another one that not a lot of people have really looked into. And one of the things that I've learned, believe it or not, thanks to Vitaly is, you know, don't sell the entire position, keep portion of it and let it ride, you know? So I think right now I'm going to eventually like my meta side, I, I'm still keeping some of my meta. I'm not never going to let it go. I'm like, what? I wrote it up. Let it, let it, let it go, you know? But, um, but in terms of position sizing, I think what it is is more based on the undervaluation of the pro of the company and also the story on what's going on. With Google, the story to me is very clear in that, number one, they have a growing cloud business that's centered around AI, which I'm seeing everywhere doing my due diligence, everyone is adopting and they're just absolutely killing it. You know, they have their own hardware hardware division with their TPUs and stuff. So they're not nearly as bottlenecked as some of their other near-term competitors are. And they've got this energy and their drive to do actually some cost cutting with um, with regards to where Google is. Google's always been a cash flow monster. And most of the cash, and the only reason why they've even had like net negative operating cash flow, I mean, operating margins on some of its um, earnings is because they have a lot of side bets that Google's always been taking. But even that they're scaling back on a little bit to make sure that they're focusing on their core business. And I think that's going to be, a, that's going to be a key for them going, going forward. So right now I think Google is in a, in a very good place.